Hey, it's Mr. Reyes here, and I'm excited to announce that Dynamic and I are going to be collaborating and bringing you an amazing cover-up seminar. And the seminar is going to be here at Dynamic Studios, happening in October 26, 2024. And this is the area that I'm going to be teaching you everything I know and everything I've learned in the last eight years of experience. Limited tickets are available, so make sure to purchase your ticket ahead of time. And I can't wait to meet you. Let's go! First of all, I want to say thank you for showing so much love to the last video I posted. You guys were asking for it and I'm glad that uh, you guys were watching it and sharing it and dropping comments and likes. So I'm going to do it again. This time I'm going to split this video in two, uh, in two parts. Today I want to just show how I'm going to be executing the nose area. And then tomorrow I'll focus on the headdress. Uh, so that way you guys can see the way I'm going to execute that. And yeah, so... So it's a good day, it's a chill day. Today what I'm using is a new machine. It's the Fury machine where I'm gonna be dropping the link so you guys can go order this machine that I'm using today. It was created by Jason Ramos, an amazing artist. And, um, and yeah, so I'm really liking this machine so far. I really love the way it runs. I like the way it packs. So what I'm using here, it is a nine curve mag. And I'm going to start with the nostrils because I want to make sure that my darkest point is there so I know how much contrast I can add underneath the, the nose. I love the way this machine packs, to be honest. I'm, I'm always very picky with new equipment. And when Jason Ramos contacted me, he's like, hey, I got a machine for you to try out. Let me know what you think. And uh, I, was, I was like, okay, sh should I do it? Should I not? Just because every tattoo I do has, uh, it has to be, you know, I have to give my all. And if my, my equipment is not there, then my quality won't be there. But yeah, so I said, I saw that it was a four stroke machine. And I said, let's do it. Let's, let's give it a try. And honestly... I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't like it, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, but I was surprised when as soon as I started using it, I'm like, okay, it's almost similar to the Flux. But this one has a, a little bit more of a different, uh, different uh, modes. One of them is, is frequency mode, which I'm still trying to figure out what that is, what that will be used for, uh, to be honest, because I'm not that familiar with frequency mode. The other one is dotting mode, which I thought that was super cool here. I mean, let me switch it to dotting mode. I think that was so sick. Look at it. Oh, come on. Oh, wait, wait. Look at this. Oh! I might be using it soon, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I really like the way it has different modes to, to use and different purposes. But yeah. So, so here what I'm doing is pretty much an Aztec cultural piece. As you guys know, I love learning about culture. So I'll probably talk a little bit more about the history behind this piece and the way I customized it the way I did. Um, I'm gonna switch to my 17 curve mag so I can start doing soft shading. I'm running it at a at six this time. I feel like I wanna do some really soft shading. So I'm gonna be taking my time with this, with my 17 curve mag. And uh, I'm using nothing but solid black. I'm building my tones just with one tone, black. And I'm using nothing but pure pressure on this. The reason why I started using nothing but solid black to execute, you know, uh, soft faces or maybe texture faces, it holds a lot better, in my opinion, of course. I feel, I really love the way my, my tattoos healed with this style of just using nothing but solid black. And it doesn't take longer, it's not faster, it's just at a really good pace. And I think that's what, uh, that's what I really like about this style. It doesn't slow me down. It doesn't make me faster. I just go at my speed that I usually go without compromising anything. And the way it heals, man, it's just, ah, 
Super dope. And I'm using nothing but pressure. I layer. And as you can see, you can already see how it's, be, it's getting, you know, really smooth underneath the nose. Another cool fact about the way I customize this tattoo is that I actually free or uh, I hand drew everything from the face to the headdress. Everything is out of my imagination because I felt like there was not a single Pinterest tattoo that was going to be able to customize or help me customize um, to be really precise to the history of this piece, which is Cuatlicue. If you guys are familiar with this goddess, Cuatlicue, it is the mother of Earth. She is the one who gave birth to, to, to us, right? But she's more known for giving birth to Huichilopochtli. And Huichilopochtli, it is the god of war. He is also the, the sun. Did I pronounce it right? The sun, like El Sol. Because sometimes I, I can pronounce like sun as in you're my son. Like, okay, I, my, I gotta practice my pronunciation. That's what I gotta do. Sun, 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 sun. Okay, got it. He is the sun. And he also has a, a sibling called, uh, it's, it's his sister, and she is considered the moon. Her name is Koyol Shauki. So it's a really interesting story because what it is is that Cuatlicue, according to the Codices de Mexico um, and other, uh, other archaeologists that left behind and history behind this specific goddess, you guys, you guys can look up an archaeologist called, or I'm sorry, you guys can look up uh, Diego Duran. He's an amazing, uh, he, was, he wrote a lot of the history of the Aztecs or the Mexicas back in uh, 1531. Okay. And I'm sorry if I start stuttering, it's just that I learned a lot of these things in Spanish. So translating it in my head, <laughs> it's, it's complicated. So I have to think about it in Spanish and translate it. If you speak more Spanish than English, then you understand my struggle. <laughs> so, um, Cuatlicue. She was, according to the story, is that she was... Uh, sweeping and that suddenly a feather dropped to her on her she picked it up this feather was magical and she got pregnant and when Koyol Shauki and the 400 kids that she had which they're considered the stars or sureños um, estrellas del sur they became very jealous and they started shaming Cuatlicue for getting pregnant again. And they started calling her names. Tu sabes. And then, after some time, Huichilopochtli told Cuatlicue, the mother, Huichilopochtli said, don't worry, mother, I'm going to protect you. I got you. You don't have to worry. So when... Koyol Shauki, the daughter, she, she was planning to kill the mother. And she convinced the other 400 kids to kill the mother because it was unacceptable, the fact that she got pregnant. So the day came where she was going to give birth to Wichilopochtli. And, uh, <clears throat> and then as soon as they were about to kill the mother, Wichilopochtli comes out of the, 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 I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it. The wound, there you go. Yeah, thank you, sir. Damn, you're good at this. You're good at this, bro. <laughs> the wound, he comes out as a warrior and starts fighting all 400 sureños, or estrellas del sur. And then Coyol Shauki comes through. Which is like, nah, you're not gonna kill my mom. And with his weapon, which is called the uh, Shikoaltl, which means um, Serpiente de Fuego, fi fi fire serpents, fire serpents. 
And uh, what happened was that as soon as they took out the, that weapon, decapitates Koyol Shauki, and then dismembers the whole entire body, limb by limb. And uh, that's how Koyol Shauki became the main god and the warrior that protected Coatlicue. And then, and then Huichilopochtli became also one of the gods that uh, a lot of the Mexicas ended up offering a lot of sacrifices to him. Uh, it's still very blurry as far as the history on why they decided to sacrifice people. But a few information says that uh, it is because they had to return the favor. So they believe that to return the favor was to sacrifice a person. That way the God can keep protecting them by offering them a human body. <laughs> Obviously it doesn't make sense, just like every other culture. But that's, that was their beliefs. Um, but yeah. So here what I'm doing is I'm fading out the contrast underneath the, the nose, just so it can create that, that contrast that is coming from this corner, hitting the nose and creating this big shadow, just so it can give you more like a three-dimensional look. And don't be afraid to pack in this black. I mean, it's if you have the contrast on the right spots, you're going to be okay with making the face uh, really stand out. There was two main gods in the Aztec culture. That was Huichilopochtli and Tlaloc. Every, every single god is important, but the reason why I'm saying that these two gods are a little bit more important uh, and that we have a little bit more information about them. The reason why it is because they were, they had a temple dedicated to Tlaloc and Huichilopochtli, which was located uh, where the pyramids were, El Templo Mayor. El Templo Mayor is located in, um, in El Lago Texcoco, which is now Mexico City. And this, this Templo Mayor, this, the main temple, they had Tlaloc, the god of rain, and Huichilopochtli as the main two to, to basically dedicate the pyramids to. The pyramids went through like five different construction um, journeys. And the final one was destroyed in, you know, 1500s, just because the Spaniards came through and they demolished everything so they can start building... Uh, uh, churches, Catholic church, or Christianity as well. But uh, yeah, it was very... Hernán Cortés was the one who gave the order to demolish everything. So they can forget about everything and the history, wipe the history. But uh, you can't really erase history like that. It didn't work. But there is so much more to this story of Cuatlicue. It is one of those things that... Uh, that it took me a while to learn and it, I can talk about it for hours and hours but I only got 30 minutes so actually I got one and two uh, parts that I'm going to be doing on this piece so I'll probably be sharing a little bit more of the history uh, tomorrow but if I think of anything else right now I'll keep sharing As far as the technique that I'm using right now, it's all pressure, like I said, all layers. Take your time, don't rush it, because I am dealing with nothing but solid black. So anything that I, if I put a little bit more pressure uh, on one of these corners, you, it's gonna show through and it's gonna be so dark and you're gonna mess up the, the softness and you're just gonna have a black dot in the middle of all the shading. So be careful. Um, if you're experienced enough to, to use this technique, use it. If you're still trying to figure out how to use the drop system, I wouldn't recommend it yet because this is very sensitive. You gotta be precise in every stroke for it not to be, you know, super dark or, or not dark enough. Or put like a black dot in the middle of everything. Sometimes the history of the Aztecs can be very confusing and 
it took me a while to learn. Like I said, I've been studying it now for the last five years or so. But uh, it gets easier to pronounce the names and stuff like that. The names are super complicated to pronounce. And learning the years and the history and memorizing the, the gods, for example. It, like all This whole entire piece, it is very... Um, it's very meaningful. That's why I decided to customize it from scratch because I had to create it out of all the knowledge that I have on my chicas. And the reason why I put this as a earring, as a hoop earring, uh, it is because that is the symbol to the sun, which is called Tonati. And I put it there to represent Cuatlicue Sun, which is Lopochtli. On the top here, I decided to add the face of the actual statue of Cuatlica, which is located in Mexico. Um, and what this signifies is basically two faces, two snakes facing each other to create the face of Cuatlicue. And I'll explain a little bit more tomorrow what that means uh, when I start doing that area. And then as far as the bottom here, you can't really see it on the frame, but I ended up adding Chicoalt, which is the uh, la serpiente de fuego, de fuego, la serpiente de fuego, which is the fire serpent, and which is the weapon of Huichilopochtli. On the back of the face here, I added uh, the feathers of a hummingbird. The reason why I added feathers of a hummingbird, it is because that is what Huichilopochtli is represented as, as a hummingbird. And the patterns in it are super dope. I really love the way it came out. So that's why I decided to just, you know, hand draw everything because there was nothing on the internet that was gonna give me this much history in one single piece or was gonna be able to connect the whole entire his, uh, story of Cuatlicue into one. But thankfully, you know, like I, I was able to get it done. Sometimes I like to rely more on my artistic abilities rather than the internet, just because right now there's a lot of AI going on and I, you can look up like Cuatlicue AI and it's gonna give you an idea of what Cuatlicue used to look like, but it's not precise because it's not gonna follow the history of it. And um, it's better to create it and follow the story. Look at that. Oof, nice. And this machine is really hidden. By the way, uh, if you really want this machine, if you want to buy one of these machines, you can head over to the website. I'm going to drop a link. And uh, Ramos, uh, Jason Ramos was kind enough to also send me a, a promo code. So if you type that in, it's going to give you 15% off. And yeah, so whoever buys this machine, just type in the promo code that I'm going to maybe write down here on the screen. Type it in and yeah, get 15% off. This is actually pretty dope though. It hits hard. I like the different modes. Another thing about, uh, another thing that a lot of artists make a mistake on when they're doing the Aztec pieces or Mechicas. I refer to them as Mechicas, but sometimes people can get confused, so I just go with Aztecs first, and then I say Mechicas, that's what the real name, or the actual name. And for those who don't know, uh, Mechicas come from the name Mechico, and uh, Aztecs come from where they started their journey, Aztlan. That's why Aztlan translated to Aztecs. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, another thing that they, a lot of people get get confused with the Mexica culture is when they're doing, and I explained this on my Instagram too, just to give some examples. Uh, what happened is that a lot of artists, they, they put the, the pyramid Chichen Itza combined with the Aztec or a Mexica god, and that doesn't make sense because the pyramid Chichen Itza, that's for the Mayans. But it's overused all over the internet and they make you believe that that is the, that, uh, an Aztec pyramid, but it's really not. The actual Aztec pyramid is called Templo Mayor and it, and it has two little temples on the top of the pyramid 
and also has um, on the bottom of the pyramid, my bad, I'm gonna keep explaining what's on the top of the pyramid. Top of the pyramid, there's two little temples, one dedicated to Huichilopochtli, the other one to Tlaloc. And then on the bottom of the pyramid, right where the temple of Huichilopochtli is, there is a, also part of the ground, they put Koyolshauki, which is the, the sister, uh, dismembered on the floor. So when they did the sacrifices, they would throw down the body and land where Koyolshauki landed. And then on the other side of Tlaloc, there is uh, two little frogs on the front, uh, located like in a small little stairway going up the, the pyramid. And then, yeah, so it's a really nice pyramid. Uh, you can't miss it, it's super dope. So that is the, that is the perfect pyramid that you should use to, uh, to really mix it with an Aztec, Aztec god. The Chichen Itza one, you can mix it with Kukulkan, which is, you know, Quetzalcoatl, the same, the same exact god, but this is for the, the Mayans. Kukulkan with Chichen Itza would make sense. Quetzalcoatl with Templo Mayor would make sense. And I'm gonna drop some images maybe, just so you guys can have like a visual of what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, another thing is that uh, I'll give you guys uh, uh, some information about the real name of the Aztec calendar. So that's not the real name. The actual name of the Aztec calendar is actually called El Solario. Just remember that one, Solario. Nobody's gonna correct you if you call it Aztec calendar. But, you know, you can just show up to a, a cookout. Is that what you call them, a cookout? Yeah. A barbecue? <laughs> show up. Same difference. Show up and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me share what I've learned this weekend with Reyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aztec calendar? No, sir. Solario. <laughs> And, uh, and my bad if I sound very confusing with the way I'm explaining things, it's just that I have so much to share that I just jump all over the place. Yeah, I get excited, bro. It's like, let me, let me talk to you guys about something important. <laughs> but as you can see with this 17 Curve Mac is how I'm doing all my shades. Solid black, like I said, nothing but solid black. Nice. Oof. Oof. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete a little bit of this highlight right here, just enough. I don't want it completely gone, but I also want like a smoother transition. There you go. That's it. Also, there's a big highlight next to the lip right here. I want to tone it down a little bit, just so it's not like center of attention and the lips don't look uh, like a, like it has a lot of attention. I don't want it to, I want to blend it in just a little bit. And start leaving a, a tiny little highlight as I get closer to the top. Look at that. Cuatlicue, the name Cuatlicue uh, means uh, falda de serpientes. In English would be, what was it? A skirt of snakes? Snakes of skirt. <laughs> snakes, a skirt of snakes. Skirt, the woman of, a, a skirt of snakes, snakes of skirt. Wait. <laughs> Hold on. Skirt of snakes, okay. I, <laughs> Oh man, that sucks. Oh man. Uh, yes, that's what the name means. And the reason why it is because, you know, it's, it's represented as a, the snakes all over her body. Uh, the face is made out of snakes. And also in the, in the front of the body, it has uh, hands, uh, hearts as a necklace. 
And like I said, I'm gonna explain a little bit more tomorrow about what the significance of every part of the body is. But just so uh, get a little ahead, that's the that's what the name translates to. Here, there's a big highlight in the middle of the cheekbone. I gotta be careful to not go too dark. So I'm gonna take my time right here and, and slowly layer this area here because I feel like it's it's a big bold spot and it's not smooth. Let me check the time. We're at 25. We're pretty close. Five more minutes. But as you can see, in 30 minutes, I was able to pretty much execute. It's a big piece too. If you if you can see my hand, it's the face is way bigger than my hand, so it's a pretty big spot. So I, like I said, I'm moving at a really good spot. I mean, at a really good pace. Chilling. There it is. Blending it in slowly. I can't wait to do this this area here. It's gonna be like a big highlight. Mm. Exquisite. Woo! Dun, 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 dun. That's my jam. A mí me gusta ver. La morena, la cintura, a mí me gusta ver. Nice. It's a good day today. Venga, venga, venga. venga, venga. Llama la atención. Nice. Almost there. Come on. Before the video ends, I'll teach you guys how to say hello. In Nahuatl, which that's how the, what that's the language they used to speak, Nahuatl, uh, which is Kiyawi. Kiyawi. Hello. <laughs> or uh, if you want to say my name is Notokach. Notokach Kevin. Notokach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's a, it's almost like Spanish. Notokas. Notokach. So you can go up to someone and say... Kiyawi no to catch Kevin. Hola, me llamo Kevin. Hello, my name is. My name is. Ah, <laughs> fucking Eminem with Nahual. <laughs> no to catch. I'm slowly learning it, but it's really complicated to learn Nahual just because there's a lot of dialects, uh, di dialectos all over the La Peninsula. So it's really hard to keep up. Viendo la cadera. Moviendo la cadera, moviendo la cadera, moviendo la cadera, a la derecha, a la izquierda, a la derecha, a la izquierda, a la derecha, a la izquierda. All right. This is part one of this project that I'm working on. Uh, this is a whole tie piece. So I'll post an, the, the next video tomorrow morning. So I'm posting this today and I'm dropping the other one tomorrow morning. So if you're watching this, you're going to be able to see the final product tomorrow. So. Stay tuned. How do you feel? <laughs> it's like, I feel bro, exhausted. Bro, yeah, it's been a few hours of... We, we went at it probably for what, maybe like, let's see, uh, nine to now. So it's been about seven hours. Yeah. So we called it at seven hours or so. Uh, I just finished half of the piece here that I'm going to be taking a video of right now. Uh, he was definitely feeling it.
and uh, uh, spicy. Spicy. <laughs> but uh, tomorrow we're gonna go back in uh, for part number two, so I can explain the top part of this tattoo. But it was a good day. Any final words of day one? No, I think it's gone really well. Um, super smooth. You definitely work fast, which. Yes. I appreciate it's just my pain tolerance maybe isn't uh, up to par. Nah, but it's, it's the thigh, that shit hurts. Yeah, <laughs> that shit hurts. Yeah, no, but it looks amazing. I'm super stoked.